it's not a game, it's a rich thing. People say you, you have to have a lot of passion for what you're doing, and it's totally true. And the reason is, uh, is because it's so hard that if you don't, any rational person would give up. It's really hard, and you have to do it over a sustained period of time. So if you don't love it, if you're not having fun doing it, you don't really love it, uh, you're going to give up. And that's what happens to most people, actually. If you really look at, 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 at the ones that uh, ended up you know, being successful, unquote, in the eyes of society and the ones that didn't. Oftentimes, it, it's the ones that are successful loved what they did so they could persevere when, you know, when it got really tough. And, and the ones that, that didn't love it quit because they're sane, right? Who would want to put up with this stuff if you don't love it? So it's a lot of hard work and, and it's a lot of worrying constantly. And uh, um, if you don't love it, you're going to fail. So you got to love it. You got to have passion. When you start out, you have to deal with the problems of failure. You need to be thick-skinned to learn that not every project will survive. A freelance life, a life in the arts, is sometimes like putting messages in bottles on a desert island and hoping that someone will find one of your bottles and open it and read it and put something in a bottle that will wash its way back to you. Appreciation or a commission or money or love and you have to accept that you may put out hundreds of things for every bottle that winds up coming back. If you have an idea of what you want to make, what you were put here to do, then just go and do that. And that's much harder than it sounds, and sometimes in the end so much easier than you might imagine. Because normally there are things you have to do before you can get to the place you want to be. But when you have a dream, it doesn't often come at you screaming in your face, this is who you are, this is what you must be for the rest of your life. Sometimes a dream almost whispers. And I've always said to my kids, the hardest thing to listen to, your instincts, your human personal intuition, always whispers, it never shouts. Very hard to hear. So you have to, every day of your lives, be ready to hear what whispers in your ear very rarely shout. You've got to find what you love, and that is as true for work as it is for your lovers. Your work is going to fill a large part of your life, and the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work, and the only way to do great work is to love what you do. Sometimes life is hard. Things go wrong in life, and in love, and in business, and in friendship, and in health, and in all the other ways that life can go wrong. And when things get tough, this is what you should do. Make good art. Life is supposed to be lived. We're supposed to go out there and do stuff and make stuff and build things and help people and talk and communicate. And how are you going to do that if the message that you get when you turn on the TV is to just stay inside? And that's what we're all sort of doing, isn't it? We're just kind of like staying inside. And we're not going out into the world and engaging in it and communicating to it and showing it, hey, this is the way the world should be. And when someone does actually do that, you know what that person is called? That person is called an artist. An artist is a creator. It's someone that is creating the future. Someone that is creating ideas and laying them down and saying, this is where mankind needs to go. But you thought, man, this idea, it's so, it's so awesome. I'm going to spend some time on it. You know, I'm going to devote my time. I'm going to spend the time to actually create this thing, to make this thing. And then when it's done, I'm going to go and show people and give it to people so that they can enjoy it. 
so that the ideas that I have in my head of how I want to see the world and how things can be better, they're not just going to stay in my head, they're going to get out there and they're going to actually reach people. You create your life. You are an artist. And the moment that you decide that and the moment that you know that, everything begins to change because then you start influencing and changing the world around you and the people around you because that attitude is super contagious. We don't have to worry about what other people are gonna think and what they're gonna say and the criticisms and all of that stuff because guess what, at the end of the day, the criticisms, they only come from people that have given up. How can it be that we feel like we need to give up about life? How can we look at this amazing, beautiful planet that we live on and think, yeah, I'm just gonna stay inside today. Man was not made to, to, to sit in cubicles and uh, do uh, meaningless work. No, we need to do meaningful work. Work that means something, that has a purpose. What is your purpose? Why are you here? What are you doing? What will you do? Where will you go? What is it that makes you happy? What is it that is gonna make you fulfilled? What are you going to get up every day out of bed and be like, oh my God, I am excited and pumped that this is the day that I get to do that. How can you be an artist at what you're doing right now? How can you create your life as an artist at what you do? In your business, in your school, in your neighborhood, in your city, where you are, you can influence things and you can make a difference. If you have a big idea, right, you have to take action and you have to do stuff. You can't just hope and, and wish that something is going to happen, right? It's going to happen when you take action and you do things and you actually work towards those goals and those ideas. Deep down, every one of us is an artist. We are someone that naturally is creative and wants to create and use our imaginations to solve problems and improve the conditions around us. That is what we are. That is what we want to do every single day. And when we don't do that, it is unnatural. When you know what you want to do and you go and you decide to just go do something else, this eats away at you and you have a guilty conscience about it, don't you? you? You know this is what you're supposed to be doing, so why are you off doing that? You've been glued to your television set and hear, hearing people that tell you that the world is all bad. Well, I'm here to tell you that the world is not all bad. The world is great because we decide to make it great. And it's up to you, each of us here, has the power and the capability to change the world right now with our way of thinking, with the things that we do. We influence and we actually are at cause over creating what the world is going to look like and what it's gonna be. So you have to focus and you have to know what you want and you have to know where you're going and you have to create the life that you want to live. It's just like Gandhi said, right? He said, be the change that you want to see in the world. Turn the TV off. Throw the newspapers away. And put your attention on creating the world that we should be living in. It's important that you do that. That you get out there in the world and you change it and you communicate and you say and you speak and you talk and you say, hey, I got an idea. Let me tell you about it. I admit, there are many things I don't know. How Stonehenge was built, what caused the Big Bang, and who let the dogs out. But I do know one thing with total certainty. This is the best time in human history to be an artist or author or to be your own boss. You live in an amazing era. 
Creative people and entrepreneurs of all stripes the world over are empowering themselves to get their messages out into the world, build their own fan bases, and create business models that work for them. It's an exciting time to be an independent, also known as indie, entrepreneur and not have to rely on book publishers, record labels, investors, or industry gatekeepers to rescue you from obscurity. Today, you can rescue yourself and build your own career, and you can do it on your own terms. But old habits are hard to shake. For decades, aspiring musicians, authors, and entrepreneurs thought the only legitimate route to success was signing some kind of a deal with a traditional publisher or corporation. It was also assumed that to be successful, you needed to get major media exposure, go on a multi-city tour, and be carried in retail outlets to have a fighting chance of survival. The times have definitely changed. The internet and low-cost digital technologies have created a thriving do-it-yourself movement with unlimited options to get exposure and reach fans. Unfortunately, thousands of people still believe the road to success can only be traveled through these traditional avenues. My advice? Wake up and smell the gigabytes. The best way to approach an independent career is to take control get your hands dirty, and market your ideas yourself. No one will ever feel as strongly about your message as you do, which means you are the best person in the world to spread the news. Sure, promoting yourself and your message takes a lot of effort, no doubt, but it's well worth it. And despite what you may have heard to the contrary, it can be profitable. There are an infinite number of success stories of creative people who have built an audience and a thriving career on their own terms. Warning, don't become a victim of the yeah buts. I know what you may be thinking. Yeah, but all those success stories are not typical. Most people struggle to get noticed and make sales. That's true, your mileage will vary. You might very well fall short of a major success but that's no reason not to take action anyway. Plus, you should make yourself aware of the stories of courageous people who break through. Their example lets you know what's possible, that it can be done. Make no mistake, it is within the realm of real possibility to make your mark, make a difference, and even make a living creating and sharing your ideas, products, and services. By honing your craft, Focusing on your fans and supporters and putting smart marketing practices into action, you just might do it too. I assure you, six months from now, there will be a new breed of artists and independent entrepreneurs, people who right now are working in relative obscurity, who will break through and be the new shining success stories in their respective fields. It's going to happen. Why couldn't one of those success stories be you? When you start out, you have to deal with the problems of failure. You need to be thick-skinned to learn that not every project will survive. A freelance life, a life in the arts, is sometimes like putting messages in bottles on a desert island and hoping that someone will find one of your bottles and open it and read it and put something in a bottle that will wash its way back to you. Appreciation or a commission or money or love. And you have to accept that you may put out hundreds of things for every bottle that winds up coming back. If you have an idea of what you want to make, what you were put here to do, then just go and do that. And that's much harder than it sounds, and sometimes in the end so much easier than you might imagine. Because normally there are things you have to do before you can get to the place you want to be. But when you have a dream, it doesn't often come at you screaming in your face, this is who you are, this is what you must be for the rest of your life. Sometimes a dream almost whispers. And I've always said to my kids, the hardest thing to listen to, your instincts, your human personal intuition 
always whispers, it never shouts. Very hard to hear. So you have to, every day of your lives, be ready to hear what whispers in your ear.